we're live from the studios of TV3, first in news, best in entertainment. So earlier, I hinted of an interview to discuss oral health care for children in rural Ghana. If you ponder over the fact that about 96% of our adult population between 35 and 40 years is affected by tooth decay, you can only imagine how dire the situation will be for children and even worse so in rural communities. And so we're speaking to reps from an NGO who seek, you know, to do something about this, to improve children's health care. Um, oral health care. My guests this morning are from the Ga the Women's Voices Foundation, the Ghana Women's Voices Foundation, and they are Nanaya Apia. She's a founding programs director, and then Aram Nanasunu is also the programs coordinator. All right, so Aram and Nana, you're welcome. You're both Thank welcome. You. Thank you very we, much. we haven't met before. Um, the, the, some NGOs, you know, they keep coming every now and then. Mm -hmm. uh, but you, for you, the Ghana Women's Voices Foundation, we haven't met before. Can you tell me more about you? Um, thank you very much mm -hmm. for having us here in the studio. And good morning, everybody. Mm -hmm. And we haven't been here for this particular kind of, okay. of um, business. But we've been in existence for the past seven or eight years, since 2007, and our focus has been to improve the lives of Ghanaian women and children mm -hmm. through interventions of relevance. Mm -hmm. So this is our latest project, even though we've done other projects in relation to women's health and then mentoring, as well as um, catering and mentoring for girls in correctional facilities. Okay. All right. Well, I'm ecstatic about this project in particular because I think that in this part of the world, in this country, we underestimate the importance of oral health care. Um, you know, if you think about the fact that it actually affects, you know, the rest of the body, perhaps you're in a position to tell us how timely and relevant um, this project you're working on yeah. in rural Ghana is, is, is. Okay. So as a practicing pharmacist for the past 17 years. Oh, you are. Yeah. Oral health has been an integral part of what we do. In as much as it's not a core competence as a pharmacy, we in Ghana Women's Voices found it extremely necessary mm -hmm. to embark on this intervention mm -hmm. because um, giving children as young as six to ten years the necessary skill as easy as brushing your teeth in one, yeah. two, three minutes is so critical that it can change their lives yeah. for pretty much a lifetime. And so we decided to do this project, and um, Nanaya will give us more insights to what, what we have done so far in the six districts of the Volta Oh, you've already worked on this project? Yes, we have. Oh, I see. Nana. So, so, well, Nana, tell us about what, what happened in the Volta region. Why did you even choose that, that part of the country for this project? Thank you, Mon. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so, Anish, um, all this started because when we work with children, women and children, mm -hmm. we always see this gap in there. The gap has always been there, so we put our team on it. Do some research. Oral health care. Yes. Mm. So do some research on this, and then we found out that well, it's it's big. It's a big gap that has not been filled yeah. by by a lot of people. Yes. I mean, the, it's it's really huge. Yes. You're looking at ten. When you pick every ten, well, this is WHO fast that when you pick ten children, school going children, mm -hmm. ten of them, six to nine of them have dental caries, mm. and that number increases to nine by the time they reach adulthood. So going into these communities, these are rural communities in the Volta region. Mm -hmm. We found these communities, we looked at the population of children in those communities and the school going children, mm -hmm. because we wanted to target them in the schools. So we selected the school, um, the communities that had um, a lot of numbers, that a lot of children going to school. Yeah. So we could reach them in these schools. So those communities were selected because they had a very high um, enrollment rates for children. Okay. Yeah. But you have to tell us how dire the situation was in the part, mm -hmm. you know, in, in the part of the Volta region. I know, for instance, that when bacteria build up on the teeth, mm -hmm. it, it actually forms plaque. If plaque is not removed, it hardens into calculus. And then yeah. that, in turn, if it's not solved, mm -hmm. you know, causes periodontal diseases. Yeah. Yeah, I have been taught about yeah. this. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But how, how about, you know, the, the practical situation on the ground with okay. the children you worked with? Okay. So going out there, um, the research or the studies or the findings all shows us mm -hmm. that when your child goes to a public school mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to a private school, when you go to when a child is in a public school, chances are that the chances are high that the child will go through education and have that problem. They will go through the system and have more. So this is it. Children in public schools tend to have more dental caries than children in private schools. Mm -hmm. And where are these public and schools? And it's just a matter of education. It's just a matter of education. Nothing to do with what they eat. 
um, to well, a certain extent. Because I can only agree with you to a certain yeah. extent. Yeah. I would think that, yeah. in fact, you would think that yeah. um, children in private schools come from um, mm. better homes mm. and mm. so have access mm. to more sweets mm. and, mm. you know, things that yeah. can actually cause yeah. cost to yeah. de yeah. decay. That's so, why I'm yeah. surprised about yeah. this. So let me come in here. There are three things that yeah. causes dental caries mm -hmm. or causes like to decay. Yes. You have bad, um, you have bad dental visits. You eat poorly as in bad dental visits as, as in, in you, you don't, don't go, visit. so you don't dentist. go to the dentist you don't go to the dentist yeah. very okay. often there are the, even the dentists are practically non-existent in the country yeah. you made reference to who data yeah. Yeah. in 2008 yeah. there was data that yeah. suggested we have we had yeah. only 148 yeah. dentists in yeah. the country yeah. Yeah. and this is equivalent to 0.06 percent yeah. you know no 0.06 per every 10,000 mm -hmm. Ghanaians. Mm -hmm. yeah. that's woefully mm -hmm. inadequate mm -hmm. okay. like most of our health systems actually and the thing is if the person goes to the dentist yeah. the dentist can make the necessary advice and interventions periodically yes. unfortunately this is like a double Wami. It's in the rural area. Yes. We, we already have a lot of issues because there's a very low ratio in terms of um, person to yes. dental in, ratio. In fact, 70% of these dentists are in Accra and yeah. Kumasi because yeah. these are where the dental schools are yeah. located. Yeah. 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 So I guess sure. that is why the intervention was necessary, mm -hmm. especially on the background of the need assessment that we did. Mm -hmm. And so when we went to the rural area, mm -hmm. in fact, the Ghana Education Service was extremely helpful. I know at this time of the year, everybody is going on um, political issues and everybody's attention is diverted right. elsewhere. When stuff like that happens, right. the children and the vulnerable are the ones that get affected the most. Right. And so going into the rural areas, meeting these children face to face and teaching them the easy skill of brushing their teeth properly is something that was, that was amazing and I'm glad that we did it. But I, I also want to know, because rural folk are actually also very particular about oral hygiene. Yeah. This yeah. my mother has, has taught yeah. me several times. Yeah. She grew up in a village yeah. too. Yeah. And, you know, they may not necessarily use our mouth cleaning yeah. methods, mm -hmm. but they have theirs. They have yeah. the local mouth cleaning yeah. methods. Yeah. They have the chewing sticks, they have yeah. the, the chewing sponges. Yeah. Is that to say this is not good enough? Um, Moon, you see, the thing is, um, the chewing stick and um, the, the sponge. sponge, those are excellent tools for cleaning and brushing the yes. teeth. But we are in 2016 and we have learned so many things, good or bad. When we, when we took on the whole, um, the whole behavior of brushing or the whole skill of brushing using toothbrushes, yes. both in the rural areas and in the urban centers, yes. it didn't come along with the skill of having to do it properly. So it's the proper process of brushing the teeth with the tools that we have we have taken on ourselves was what was lacking. So is this to abolish our local cleaning methods? Of no, course, of methods, course, or of just course to complement. Exactly, to complement and to equip the children with the skill of doing it properly. So how rural then is this area you went to? Because I'm, is it so rural the dwellers could, well, could not or could afford um, toothbrushes and, and, and toothpaste. How rural was it then? Um, how rural? I, yes. Okay. So this was one thing we did. We asked them questions about their oral health when we got there. And then a majority of them, in fact, all the children we spoke to have never had a wet dentist before. And when we asked them how they, what they do, um, if they've ever brushed, yes. yes, a few of them brushed that morning, and we asked them if they brushed the previous day. Okay. Some did. For, for, what for, for those who use? did not, did they clean their mouths anyway? Yes. What, uh, majority, of the, majority of them use just water. That's what they say. Oh. I rinse my mouth with water. Not the that, chewing sticks and Not the chewing stick. A few of them use chewing stick, a few of them use brushes and paste, but the majority of them rinsed with water, and that's what they do. Mm. And so you're looking at a setting where... Like I was saying earlier on, if you don't visit the dentist very, uh, very often, yeah. you, eat, you don't eat well, you eat a lot of sugary food, yeah. and you don't have a very bad dental hygiene, mm -hmm. you don't brush well. This is what causes tooth decay. Mm -hmm. So they fall in there somewhere. Yeah. Yes. Yes. In fact, all of us fall in there somewhere. So we went in there to teach them how to do this properly, brush. We, we did not go and take this away from We didn't tell them to stop chewing the sticks and the brushes and, and the sponges. sponges. <laughs> exactly. Because I still but chew those. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Those yeah. are very good, actually. Yeah. Those are very yeah. good. But you need to do it properly. Because what you don't want is the food remains in your mouth that causes the plaque. That's what you don't want. So you yeah. need to get it out as often as you can. Yeah. That is what you need. Okay, then. So now you have to take us through this drill because I'm yeah. sure there are even adults <laughs> who don't know how to do this right. <laughs> Unfortunately, you didn't come with any um, <laughs> teaching materials. 
<laughs> but if I had the brush, for instance, if I had yeah. the, the brush, um, how how would I go about it? So, All right. We so, have just about two minutes. We have okay. to do this quickly. So what you need to do is um, start from the lower jaw. Okay. Okay. So move down. I'm going to show you a quick one. Yes. Move. Choose um, a motion. Then you move in clockwise or anti-clockwise location. Start from lower jaw. Uh -huh. Brush on top of it. In that in that motion. When yes. you go clockwise, you maintain that that posture throughout. Yeah. And then brush from the lower jaw. Brush the down. And brush the top. And brush the inner side. And then you move up front and do the same for this side. Oh boy. Go up. <laughs> yes. Okay. Ah, so yeah. that's the demonstration going on there. Yeah. Uh huh. <clears throat> that's a big jaw. Yeah. <laughs> but so let's have... uh, let's talk about brushes. You know, because I think it's also important how adequate you know how. The, the, the toothbrush is let's look at the bristles for instance yeah. how hard today we have all sorts of textures mm -hmm. hard me medium mm -hmm. soft mm -hmm. we have all sorts of lengths and, mm -hmm. and sizes and shapes what's the right toothbrush i'm thinking that soft is the most ideal because you don't need anything hard that will destroy your, your gum, gum especially when the gum is blistered yeah it becomes infected mm -hmm. and so soft is the way to go the, the even for smokers you know there's this toothbrush called smokers I know. Are so please, it's not, it's not about the hardness please of the bristles yeah. it's about the technique <laughs> please, and the skill please I avoid the hard bristles and mm. we want to say a very big thank you to yas <laughs> for sponsoring all these kids with yeah. toothbrushes mm. they came yeah. along with us they Lexa give every Ghana. yeah let's start Ghana, yas, the producers of yas they came in and gave every child we, we visited, every school we visited, they gave toothbrush and toothpaste to all these kids. And okay. they went back home with them. So okay. I'm very sure that okay. they are picking up their habits. Yeah. And uh, I'll, if you don't mind, i also like to say a big thank you to Global Fund for Children. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And they've been a huge supporter for us and we're grateful thank for you. that. Thank yeah. you. Quick one. How often must we change our toothbrushes? And every three months. Every three if months. If you have a good one, and most of the ones in the market are not so good, so I'll say every two months. Every, every, every two months. Every two months. Yeah. Two not months quarterly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Mm. Thank, Thank you, you so too. much. Nana Ya, a PR programs director, Women's Voices Foundation, and then Aram Nanatsunu, programs coordinator. They just um, wrapped up on a project that they executed or implemented in um, the Volta region, something about um, oral health care for rural children in, in the Volta region. All right. You